Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest is the President of the Republic of Colombia, Juan Manuel Santos. Mr. President, thank you very much for uh, being with us. Thank you very much for having me. It's a historical juncture, maybe in the history of uh, Colombia. Uh, Colombia has been hurt by a very brutal, uh, some call it a civil war, uh, the fight between uh, the government and the revolutionary armed forces of Colombia, known as FARC. There have been peace talks going on in Cuba since 2012. There has been some progress, but it seems things are accelerating. The FARC declared a unilateral ceasefire on December 20th, and you recently said that you wanted to negotiate a bilateral ceasefire, which is a big change for your strategy. How close are we to a comprehensive deal between your government and the FARCs? Well, this has been a, a war that has lasted 50 years. It's the oldest and only armed conflict in the whole Western Hemisphere. And uh, we've been trying to end this conflict for almost three years. Uh, one year secretly and two years openly. We have five points in our agenda. We have already agreed on three of them. We need to negotiate the two most difficult ones. Uh, one has to do with the victims and transitional justice. And the last one has to do with what you call DDR, demobilization, disarmament, and reintegration. We are trying to simultaneously uh, address those two last points. And uh, I hope we can advance uh, as fast as possible, because the sooner we agree, the more lives we will, we will save and the more violence we will save. When do you think realistically a comprehensive deal can be signed? This year, it's 2015? Very, it's very difficult for me to set a, a specific date. It has backfired before. Everybody has advised me not to put a, a sort of a definite date. But I would hope that this year we could end this conflict if we continue uh, the momentum that we have right now. Why did you make this decision uh, that I was mentioning, the bilateral ceasefire? Until now, you've said, no, we, will, we will continue military operations against the FARC. Now you're saying, we're going to stop them. This is a big change. It's not something that's easily accepted by everyone in your country, as you know. Why did you make that decision? Because uh, as uh, the process matures and circumstances change, you ha also have to change your, your position. So when I said, no, ceasefire whatsoever until the end of the process. I said it because uh, the process was still very, uh, very weak. There was no trust, but we have advanced uh, enough. And uh, sooner or later, we have to sit down and negotiate the very uh, difficult terms of a, of a ceasefire. It's a very complicated geography. It's not an easy thing to, to uh, control and to monitor. So I, I said, now that you have uh, offered a bilateral, uh, unilateral ceasefire indefinite, which is the first time they do this ever, I reciprocated saying, let's start, uh, asking, uh, let's start negotiating a bilateral ceasefire uh, because I think the time is ripe to do it. And I am willing to, if we end negotiations, to declare it uh, even before we finish all the points of the agenda. You mentioned a very important word, trust. Do you now trust that the FARCs are negotiating in goodwill? There have been past experiences. You mentioned them. Do you think that now you can really trust them as a partner for peace, that they've decided that it's time to end this 50-year war? Yes, I think. They have demonstrated uh, that they are willing this time, because in the re in, as you mentioned, in other times they used negotiations to, uh, str to strengthen themselves, to get a political or a military That's advantage. That's not the case this time? This is not the case. I think they are now uh, aware that they have no alternative, that this is their best alternative. And uh, for what uh, I have seen and, uh, and uh, proved, I am uh, convinced that they, this time, want peace. 
Do you think uh, that you have the support of uh, the people in uh, your country and especially in the military? The military has been fighting the FARC and has been ordered to fight them uh, for years. You were previously a minister of defense. You've been a president since 2010. Do you think they really want to make peace with the FARC as well or they might want to continue war because they've been told because there might be some vested interest? No. One of the big differences with past attempts to reach peace is precisely that I uh, involved the military since the very beginning. I explained to them uh, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. And, and they sit at the table, actually. They're absolutely convinced that this is the way out. Every war has to end in a negotiating table. And they are present there. I put two former generals as uh, plenipotentiary negotiators, and this has given them a lot of trust, uh, a lot of confidence in that the, the end game will not be against them, because they, they of course, uh, uh, hear that the, in other negotiations that the military had been uh, sacrificed. This is not the case in the Colombian negotiation. There is also maybe it's just uh, after uh, the negotiations end, if they end successfully, as you seem to be hoping, uh, how will uh, the Colombian people decide on this? Uh, there is a debate in your country. Should there be a popular referendum, as uh, you seem to want? The FARC are not that favorable to it. Do you think that this needs to be the decision by the people and the referendum is the best way to do that? I, I promised the Colombian people that whatever we negotiate will be put to them, for them to decide, yes or no. And I will uh, honor my promise. Uh, how is a matter of negotiation with the FARC? Because this was one of the conditions that we put since the beginning of the negotiations. Everything we, we agree and the, the, the final agreement will be put to the Colombian people. But the, the way how it will be do by a popular refer referendum or by uh, there are different uh, uh, different ways that are stipulated in our in our constitution or other ways. But you would like a national a popular referendum? Uh, yes, by by okay. by all means, a referendum not in the legal sense. I have not decided, and we have not decided because this is this has to be a a, a bilateral decision, but. But uh, what I can tell you for sure is that there is some way that we are going to consult the Colombian people and they will decide if they like the agreement or not. And they will vote for peace? I am absolutely certain they will vote for peace. I, I want to get to the issue of uh, drug trafficking. Obviously, Colombia has been at the forefront of a U.S.-led war on drugs. Many people in Latin America believe that this has not been efficient that actually there needs to be a change. I've uh, heard you say such things, but you haven't proposed really an alternative. Would you be in favor of maybe legalizing uh, some uh, drug consumption or doing something else than just war eradication uh, that has not been very effective? There are two points there. First, uh, your last uh, point, yes. I, uh, I was the first uh, head of state, sitting head of state, to propose an alternative to this war on drugs that was declared in the United Nations more than 40 years ago. We have failed. This is uh, something that uh, nobody puts in doubt because uh, the results are there. So we need to negotiate to agree on a different alternative. What alternative? I am willing to accept any that has a multilateral uh, support. There is no way that one country or a few countries can solve this problem, which is a multinational problem. And that's why I suggested to the Summit of the Americas, and they accepted it, the U.S. for the first time, Canada for the first time, to review the whole strategy. And there's going to be a, a meeting of the General Assembly, a special meeting of the General Assembly of the United Nations in the year 2016 to address this specific point. But would le legalization or partial legalization be a solution, an option it, for it, you? It could be an option. And what I've said is, in my case, in the Colombian case, which has been the country that has suffered most 
no other country has put so much sacrifice in blood in this war on drugs as Colombia. So we have some moral authority to speak on this issue. And uh, I say we will agree on anything that works, uh, provided that has multilateral support. And, and let me address a second point. One of the very important issues of the peace agreement, one of the five, one of the five items of the agenda is precisely drug trafficking. And this is going to be a, a game changer because the FARC has been labeled as the biggest cartel in the world. Uh, they say that they're not drug traffickers, that they simply finance themselves through drug trafficking, whatever, whatever it is. The fact that they, in a way, switch sides, and instead of protecting the coca plantations and the uh, drug trafficking routes, they will help the government, the state, to substitute um, the illegal crops for legal crops and to do away with the laboratories and the routes is something that has a, going to have a tremendous uh, impact on drug trafficking in the world because we still are, Colombia still is, the principal provider of cocaine to the world market. So this is extremely important. Uh, last question. Uh, there's been obviously a big change in the region. Uh, the USA and Cuba are uh, talking again. Uh, Cuba has hosted those talks with the, with the FARC. Uh, has that helped uh, in a way for this change? I don't know how you want to characterize that change, historical or that's... Yes, well, first of all, uh, this is a major uh, change in U.S. policy towards Latin America. It's going to help a lot the dialogue between the U.S. and Latin America. Uh, we're going to meet uh, in the summit of the Americas in Panama uh, in April, and this is going to be a, a, a new and very fresh environment. I think this, this was a very bold and courageous step by President Obama. Uh, this has uh, obviously had a, an impact on all of Latin America, and, and it, it will have a positive impact on the peace process. Um, because Cuba, as you say, has hosted the uh, negotiations, and there, were, there are always uh, sort of communicating uh, 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 steps in between one process uh, and the other in the Latin American context. So this, this is positive. This is a win-win situation. Okay, Mr. President, thank you very much for answering all our questions. Thank you for watching this interview here on France 24. Stay tuned for more news.